I've really been feeling frustrated and stuck in my business recently because of my reluctance to bend to the will of the social media algorithms. I'm going to share with you a couple of resources that have helped me see both sides, so I hope you'll find these helpful as well. As a solopreneur and a coach who is trying to grow their business, obviously I have to be on social media in some form. I have a website, I have a newsletter, I have a YouTube channel and I have an Instagram account and the latter is the one that actually has the most followers but it's also the one that I find most complicated. If you are creating for your business, then I am sure you know what it's like to spend a lot of time and a lot of effort creating posts that only get shown to a fraction of your audience and then they disappear among the mountain of available information within a few hours. One of the reasons why I'm also trying to grow my YouTube channel is actually that apparently YouTube videos have a longer shelf life. So when somebody looks for something that I've created three years ago, then they might still be able to find it. But still, it's difficult to keep motivated and be inspired and continue to make all these things when you don't see any results or return on this investment in the short term. I am a person with extroversion preferences, so I always enjoy joining groups of like-minded people. And one of these online communities that I'm a member of is called Think Boundless. It is organized by Paul Millard. He wrote an amazing book called The Pathless Path. And Jonathan, who is also in the group, is also on YouTube, shared a couple of resources recently that I really enjoyed and that I think have helped me recalibrate my attitude a little bit. On the one hand, he shared an article called What Happened to the Creator Economy, written by Evan Armstrong. And I'm going to link all of the things that I'm mentioning below. The article speaks to how businesses had formed around this creator economy idea and how these businesses like, for example, Patreon, Substack, Linktree and others have actually laid people off. So evidently the influx of new creators has not been as much as these companies had anticipated. The article also cites statistics about the percentage of content creators who can actually make a living with their job. So my point to how much time and money it takes to create content on the one hand and then not being able to live off of it and not receiving any tangible remuneration for it seems validated. Now, on the other hand, I've recently watched a video by Ali Abdal about lessons from having read 107 productivity books. I also have judging preferences and that means I like to plan and I enjoy ticking things off my to-do list. The planning and the writing of a to-do list is something that I've been neglecting recently. So it was a nice reminder seeing the nine or so lessons that Ali shared. The first one was to have a goal and then know what the goal is and then basically break down the goal and then make time slots for it to work on the goal, etc. I really appreciated the reminder and went out and was going to buy a new journal and a new planner because yes, I am that girl who thinks that maybe a new planner is just going to save my life. But I didn't find any that I liked. So I actually took some time and created my own. On the heels of having watched this video and feeling reminded that yes, I need to set my goal and I need to write it down and I need to work towards it. Maybe that's going to make me feel more in control, more in charge and less frustrated. The same Jonathan in the same online group shared a video by Camila Ray. In that video, she talks about the things that she's learned and the joys that she's experienced from starting a YouTube channel and from making videos, even though it may not translate directly into a lot of subscribers. And the way that she's laid out how much she gets out of doing the thing just for doing the thing was also a very nice reminder that self-expression is a gift and a privilege. I love sharing insights about psychology, about psychological type and relationships, but also how cool to then learn these new skills that have to do with producing a video, scripting a video, editing a video and publishing a video and all the things and also connecting with other people through the internet, people that I might never otherwise have met. So 
not every benefit has to be tangible. Some of them are intangible and they're great. Long story short, if you're a solopreneur and you're frustrated with social media, content marketing, and having to do it all by yourself, here's what I'm going to try and do. First of all, acknowledge that it sucks because it does. Second, know myself and leverage that knowledge. I know my type preferences. I know that having a planner is going to be good for me and I know that I'll feel better not doing this by myself. If you don't have extroversion or judging preferences, then this may not work for you. But once you know your type, then you can adjust accordingly. For example, if you're a dominant extroverted sensing type, you're probably a lot more comfortable going by the seat of your pants and doing things spur of the moment. And you wouldn't need to write a script or anything like that. Number three, I'm going to share things I enjoy sharing, not just the things that neatly fit into any of the relationship coaching or other niches that I should be in. Although I might keep this business stuff on a separate channel just to not confuse anyone. Number four, I'm going to do it at my own pace. Yes, the algorithm is going to help and support those creators and those people who have a consistent publishing schedule, but I'm not a machine. If there is a summer to be had or if there is an event that I want to go to and to something to do instead, growth will just have to take a little bit longer. I'm 48 now, so this is another lesson that I've learned. I don't want to hustle now or postpone enjoying my life until some arbitrary time of retirement or a later date. I want to enjoy my life now. And that means baking in the breaks when I need them now. Last but not least, I need to get out of my own head, stop trying to emulate all the gurus and remember that just like making up my own planner, I can do this my own way too. The world is big enough for all of us to show up as our whole selves and do what feels right to us. So I'm one of those old school people who, alongside the online calendar and Notion, I also like to use paper planners. And I actually went to the store to buy a new one, but I couldn't really find any one I liked in the selection that they had. So I figured I might as well try and write my own. So the ones that I used to use, this is the, the self journal. And I thought I'd take a look at the items or the characteristics of the planners that I enjoy. And then how can I translate that into a paper planner that I write myself? So this one, for example, is a, is a big book. It's for three weeks, uh, sorry, 13 weeks, so three months or so. And you have a page with things to do. And it's a benchmark where you're looking at health, finances, work, career, etc where you're at right now and then you test again in three months time and then here are goal issues and you can keep yourself accountable with mo what's the motivation why are you doing it what are the milestones what are the drivers and then accountability and then you have a, here a habit tracker you can see it was really good with the morning pages at the beginning of the year and then i do like having a monthly overview at the beginning of the thing so I know in case there is any deadlines and then this one is organized that it has all the months first and then it has the weekly planning page that I also enjoyed although there is a lot of flicking back and forward but I do like the reflection so what were the wins what's the best thing that happened review the goals how can you use your time better and then here you also have the opportunity to do a check mark kind of every for every day of the week. I don't know if I'm gonna take that on. And then this is what a daily planner looks like. You have a gratitude, you have a goal, you have the three targets for the day, you have a bit of a calendar, a journal, what's it called, a bit of a, you know, by time for the meetings that you might have and then a page of notes. And I did like this. I like also that it wasn't dated because you can just circle the day of the week and write the day. And so you don't feel like you have to throw the rest away when, uh, if you're not using it or if you miss a week, which is also happening. And then another super favorite is the Passion Planner. I use this a lot um, and it's laid out quite similarly because, yeah, you're supposed to have goals and know where you're going and then you're supposed to keep track of what it is, right? So these guys have um, 
three months, one year, three years and lifetime goal a wish list and then they give you instructions of how to fill it out and then this is the one that you start with like what's the what's the next thing that you can do and then you break it down and they also have um, a monthly outline in advance and then they go into the weeks and actually with the passion planner I found that I don't need the everyday hour by hour kind of thing because when I have appointments that's what I use the online calendar for so I don't really use the half hour increments but they also do have very nice um, reflection pages and I really do like the monthly reflection pages here again it's like what was the most memorable part biggest lessons assessing priorities what are you proud of what's the difference uh, what are you grateful for and then what can you improve in the next month and I don't know, I think I'll, I'll have to decide whether I want to do reflections weekly or on a monthly basis. So let's see, the two journals that I have here that I can start writing in that I want to figure out is just one basic composition notebook. It has 200 pages and this is a Muji notebook that's a bit smaller and I quite like it that it's compact. I like that it, it's, you know, smaller, the lines are a bit more dense but it only has 80 pages so I don't know how many I'm gonna need but this one seems pretty large for writing so I think I'm gonna go ahead with this one and then let's uh, draw some lines and figure out a layout. this is the first draft I guess these this first page is going to be for the goal so that it's going to be easy for me to find and review to keep sure that my mind stays focused and then I have a page for habits here and the thinking behind it is they have to be something that I don't that are something like a stretch goal that I don't always do anyway so that it's too easy to check off so i'm gonna think about what else i'm going to put in here probably something to do with connecting with my husband and my friends probably something to do with healthy eating as well the movement goal is already there because i know i'm not hitting that every day but you know maybe seeing the uninterrupted line is going to give me an extra boost and then here's a page for the month where, like I said, uh, projects and deadlines is going to be on one page and then I'm going to reflect on the other side. And I was wondering about doing a date thing again where I would write, um, you know, the one, 1 through 15 and then 16 through 31. But the point is, and the reality is, I don't always have something every day. So maybe I'm just going to keep this flexible and write down if there is an actual deadline, or maybe, you know, that can be for birthdays as well. And then following the monthly page is going to be the weekly page. And for the week, like I said, the, any daily actual appointments I'm going to have in my online calendar anyway. So this is, again, an overview to keep the goals top of mind. And I figured I'm going to write down what is worrying me about them or like the limiting thoughts and beliefs that I have that will get in the way of me reaching those goals and then make sure that I have a reframe or a plan how to attack them depending on what the goals are and what the worries are so that I can remind myself that I can do this and that yes, the worries are normal or the limiting beliefs are normal, but we can proactively work against them and then here for the week i have lessons learned highlights lowlights and gratitude or what i'm most great grateful for um which is similar to the monthly review but i think for the monthly review because i also want to keep track somehow like not too detailed though of all the articles that i read or all the videos that i watch or you know, maybe even movies and TV shows, or well, probably not, because I think this is more productivity slash work related. Um, I want to make sure that I write down things that I enjoyed, and maybe the those favorites are going to move into highlights um, as well, or into lessons learned for the week, because then whatever I have learned, I think I'm going to like making a video about it and then sharing it as well. 
And these are the first pages that I've actually inked in. I'm not gonna, I was thinking about inking in the, the next ones as well. I have them written out in pencil. So I know until the end of the year, until the end of December. So I know we're up to in the book, it's like maybe a third or it's not quite half of the book um, until we get to like a yearly December reflection. But I figure I'm gonna work with this for a week or so and then see how that goes. And then that's going to give me the freedom to adapt and change the categories to the ones that I actually feel like I use. Okay.